So this should work now. Okay, so we teleport. Please teleport with us. Well, teleport system in Roblox Studio or basically like a teleport brick so when you step on it I will teleport you to a place so first let's get some parts we have our first part right here this is gonna be our teleport brick our teleport button or whatever you may call it we're gonna name this TP uh, for short we're gonna make another part and this is gonna be called a uh, point B or uh, yeah let's, let's name it point B so this is where our character is going to be teleported to. So let's, uh, we can do actually, we can make it maybe make a platform or something like this right here. Uh, make sure you actually rename this to something else, not point B. So whatever platform or something, uh, make this like yellow. Okay. All right. Maybe that's too ugly of a color actually. Yeah, okay, let's move this upwards here. Oops. Okay, so we know where we are teleported. Now for point B, point B, the place or the brick that is uh, where the player is going to be teleported to, uh, definitely you want the can collide to be false. Uh, make sure, I think both of them should be anchored. All of them should be anchored anyways. Uh, so make sure these are all anchored. All of these would be anchored, okay. Uh, let's instead make this a bit more tr uh, transparent, just a bit, and I think this is good enough. All right. So now, <clears throat> maybe let's make this a cylinder. Or uh, can we make that? Hold a minute. Uh, cylinder. So let's make it look like a button, right? That so it actually looks pretty decent. Has some sort of decent design to it. Okay, and let's uh, color this green. I guess. Um, okay. So what we want to do is we want to, when the, this is touched by a player, the player is going to be teleported all the way over to this platform right here. Now actually make sure uh, make sure that this is actually above the ground. So the, te the player is going to be teleported in the middle of this brick because that's the center of the brick or the part. Um, you can actually change it to make it uh, the player on top of the brick. It's pretty simple, uh, but we're going to go over that uh, soon. So first thing, let's go on this TP brick. This is the TP button where the player is going to touch insert a script inside this, so insert a script, uh, plus the plus, insert a script. Okay, now first first thing first, um, let's maybe let's, hmm, okay, let's make a variable, local part equals script up here. So this is the part that the script is in. Now we can do part, we're gonna make a um, touched event, and we're gonna connect that to a function, a touched event. So part that touched. So this fires every time it has been touched. Uh, part that touched, uh, I think it's connect, right? Connect function. So we're gonna connect this to a function. Brackets, and in this bracket, we're gonna do hit. So this parameter is gonna be uh, known as whatever hit the button. Or, yeah, basically, uh, or basically whatever touched the button, to be exact. So whenever the part is touched, now we want to know if the thing that touched the button is a player because you know uh, this blaze plate is technically touching this button right this base plate is basically touching this button so we don't want to fire this code when it's already touched by a base plate right so we want it to run whenever a player touches it not as any part so we'll do we'll define a variable local player equals game the get game dot players get uh get player from character hit dot parent so what this does, oh, hit that parent with a capital P. So hit that parent is basically uh, whatever hit it. So if a player hit or, or touch this, I should just say touch actually. Uh, when a player touches this, um, no matter what, every time it touches, it's either, uh, it, it's a body part of the player's character. So for example, for example, like a, uh, a leg, or if you're on R6, uh, like lower leg or, yeah, I mean, you, you get the idea. It's body parts of the player's character. So, and the parents uh, of those body parts are the character. So that's why I use get player from character because the character is a parent of hit, of hits, right? Which is the body part that touched the, the button. And you wanna get the player from that character. So we know what player that is. 
Um, so we can do uh, the reason why you do this is so we can make the if, thing, if player then. So this will only fire uh, or whatever inside this code will only fire if the player uh, if the player touches it if the whatever touches it is a player I should say, and we can continue this code. So then we can use the then we can, then we can actually do the teleport uh, teleport code I guess you can say. So we'll do player or actually uh, yeah you know what play that character character make sure you spell this correctly. Uh, wait for child. I don't think I'm not sure if you really need wait for child. Um, actually, let's do humanoid because I'm not. Sure, I don't really think you need it to do wait for child for this. That humanoid. Uh, so not this. Uh, that C frame. Let's actually put this in a variable. Just so it's easier. So. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know to be honest. It's really your choice if you want to put in variables. Just so it's maybe more easier to understand. I don't know. Or more, uh, I guess, more efficient. Local human equals. Okay, yeah, and that was kind of weird. So local human is the human of the character. So human is part of the character, which is part of the player. Human is what you want to use for. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, not human Sorry, humanoid root part. When you, if it doesn't work, you might need to use wait for child for this. The same. Um, so humanoid root part is what we want to use to teleport the player's uh, location. I guess you can say or to teleport the player or change the player's location. So you want to do human dot C frame. C frame basically uh, the first three values of C frame is the position. So X Y Z equals game dot workspace game dot workspace dot point B dot C frame. Oops. C frame. All right. So so far I think this is good. Uh, last thing we need is probably a cooldown because whenever the player touches this button, it's not touching only once, right? So basically, every time a player moves, it's touching more than once. So we don't want the the code to fire like multiple times when the player is really only touching it once. So we want to do a local cooldown. Cooldown equals equals false. Okay. So we can combine this with the if statement. I think so. We can do that. So n cooldown equals false. Equals equals false. Then cooldown equals true. Equals true. And then we'll wait. Wait two, I guess. That's good enough. Cooldown equals true. Uh, cooldown is false. Sorry. So when cooldown is false, so basically this will uh, this function will only uh, work if the cooldown is false. So basically, there's only a two second a cooldown whenever uh, whenever the cooldown will be changed back to false. And so it works. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this might not work in the first try. Let's see if it works in the first time. If it does, that would be really cool. Okay, so I have my output here. Uh, you can use your output. Uh, you can view your output on the view tab. Uh, click on output. Uh, this is just so we can uh, see what errors we have. So we're going to step on it. Okay, perfect. It works on my first try. And so that's really it. Um, there's a lot of ways you can actually manipulate this or you can really upgrade how this works. So for example, your character will be teleported in the center of this brick. What well, if you don't want this platform? Let's say you want to, you want to, you, you want to only use one brick. This is going to be the point B brick. Okay, change can collide to true and the transparency to zero again. Okay, so let's say there's only one part. You want to teleport the player, but if you only have this, it will teleport the player like in the center of this brick, right? And it will be pretty glitchy, you know? So what if you want to teleport the player on top of this without another brick, without an additional brick? So this is going to be our point B. Let's color. We're just going to color it uh, green, I guess. Um, all we have to do is really uh, do human. We just need to up, uh, modify this, and all we need to do is plus vector three dot new, which is a vector three value. Uh, vector three no. Vector three is basically a data three values. Is that correct? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not even. I'm not even what I'm saying. Uh, do zero, uh, ten zero. So what we've done, we added vector three. Uh, three type value and our three uh, vector three is basically XYZ uh, the position so XYZ I mean 
I think you guys know what X, Y, Z is. So all we just really did, we added 10 to the Y value. So basically Y is uh, vertical, so up and down. So we uh, added 10, uh, 10 above this uh, C frame, above this position. So our player will be uh, teleported like 10 studs above this uh, platform, which is the initial point B. So of course our player won't be like, you know, glitched inside the center of the, the thing. Oh, hold on. Uh, table value. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, oh, sorry. It's vector3.news because we're making a. I'm not sure why it's new, but um, yeah, it's vector3.news. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So this should work now. Okay. So it teleport. This teleported us above the platform. And yeah, that's basically it. Those are the two basic uh, scripts you can use to make a teleport uh, a teleport system or uh, make a player teleport. Um, you can use this with everything. This is just for a button. You can use this for like anything else really. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like the video and be sure to subscribe so I can make more of these and comment down what you want, uh, what you want next, what other tutorials or stuff you need.